All right, guys, we're two days out from Oslo Half Marathon, my second ever half marathon. I have uh, big plans <laughs> and I want to share them with you today. Uh, I want to share some pre-race thoughts with you, uh, why I'm very nervous, um, injury update, um, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to drink and eat during the race, uh, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. All right. So I have been building up to this half marathon for quite a while. Of course, it's uh, simply part of my overall build up over many years. So it's not like I've invested my whole life into this one race, not at all. It's my second ever half marathon, but I have invested uh, quite a lot in it. I have focused on it for a few months now. I've done a lot of workouts. Uh, if you're not following me on Strava, you should do that. There's a link in the description where you can see all my training, etc. Uh, I also made a few videos from track sessions, etc. I'll link them here. And so I feel fitter than I've ever been in my whole life. I am at my fittest right now. And I'm feeling very ready for the race. But, and I'll just talk about that right away, there is a big but in the room. And that is my foot injury. I have a little bit of a sharp pain underneath my foot in the plantar fascia. It's not back at the heel where it usually is, plantar fasciitis. It's more uh, under the ball of the foot. So I'm very worried. I would say it's even as much of a... It's, it, I might even say that it's a 60% chance that it's going to crop up during the race and that might be uh, catastrophic. So. I'm very disappointed that I have this little injury because it might ruin my whole race, but uh, it might also not. I might be lucky. So let's focus on the positives and if it all, if it happens and I end up not finishing, well, at least I have built up a lot of fitness over the months and I can build on that in the months to come. So I'll look on the bright side, but let's hope that it doesn't come up and uh, I get to use my fitness because right now I feel like I'm very fit, as I said, and I'm ready for this, this mar half marathon. It's my second ever half marathon. The last one I did was a trail, sort of gravel road, very up and down kind of course. Uh, I did it in 146 or something, or 145 actually, something. And um, this one, I have some uh, greater goals, and I'm, mu I'm much fitter now than I was for that half marathon. Uh, the course, I'm looking at it here on the computer. Also a half marathon, it's a new course last year and this year, uh, there's more hills, <laughs> so it's a slower course. Of course it's 21.1k, which is a half marathon, uh, and there are two big hills um, in the race. Mm, you know, it's a pretty slow course looking at it, I'm thinking it's a pretty slow course, so that's a little bit disappointing because I want to do a fast race, right, but that's okay. It is also a half marathon and it is a, it's a nice course. I've run part of it in training. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be nice. In terms of goals, it's very difficult to say because I don't have as much experience in this regard as some people do. I haven't run many half marathons, but I do have a lot of theoretical knowledge. I mean, I read a lot of exercise physiology and I, I think running all day, every day. So, you know, I, I do have a lot of I have a general idea of what I'm able to do and I've looked at my tempo runs and you know my hard workouts over the last few weeks and sort of used that to gauge where I'm at, what kind of pace I might be able to sustain. Um, and um, let's just say in broad terms I have three goals. I want to go sub 140. I want to go sub 140. That is like my, my, my goal, let's call it my goal C. A, B, C. So that's, that's the C goal, which is, um, you know, if I don't meet, reach that goal, I'll be, I'll be very disappointed, you know, if I can't run sub 140. But I'm pretty sure I can, you know, I'm very sure I can do that, unless something goes wrong. My B goal, which is probably the most realistic goal, <laughs> is uh, sub 135. One hour, 35 minutes for the half marathon. Sub 135, that is that is my sort of most realistic goal and uh, it's still gonna be hard because this is a this is a tough course uh, obviously it's on mostly as a road half marathon so it's on pavement and, and then my a goal my a goal is pretty hard to attain i think but possible maybe it's uh, sub 130 so 129 59 or whatever 
that's what I'm dreaming of. That's what I really, really want to do. Um, but whether or not that's possible is difficult to say, I think. Based on my current fitness, I would say that if I had a flat course, if it was a completely flat course, I'm pretty sure I would be able to go 129 or even lower maybe, I don't know, but sub 130 at least. Uh, but because of the hills, uh, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to say. I, I have to sort of take into account all these hills and I've been calculating, because, just because I like to do it, I have a calculator here. I, I really like this calculator, you know, rather than on the computer. And I'm looking at the course and I'm looking at uh, other people that ran the course last year and how much they're slowing down per kilometer in the hills, etc. Because um, if I'm going to do one, 130, so 130, that's 4 minutes and 15 seconds per kilometer pace, average. Uh, which means that I'm going to have to stick to about 415 pace on the flat, or maybe even 410 really, to make up for the fact that there's a lot of hills. And then on the hills, who knows? You know, I'll slow down by 10, 20, 30 seconds per kilometers. And then on the downhills, I'll gain a little bit. Maybe I can run four minute pace on the downhills, maybe even 350 sometimes, three minutes, 50 seconds. Uh, but that, you know, I don't know. And I, I blew it last, my last half marathon, I ran too fast in the first half and I ended up paying for it in the second half. I don't want, I don't want that to happen again. And the downhills can be punishing on the legs. Um, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to look a little bit more at the different paces and I'm going to, uh, but most of all it's based on effort. You know, I, what I, what I feel is sustainable. I don't want to go above my lactate threshold until the very end of the race. So I have to sort of feel that and I have to look at my heart rate and I have to be sort of able to just adjust on the fly, so to speak. So that's, that's my goals and uh, the race course, uh, in terms of what I'm going to wear, pretty basic pair of shorts. <laughs> Compress uh, sports, calf sleeves. Uh, I'm running in the Ultra uh, 1 2.5, uh, which I have a review of. I'll put it here. Really good shoes, but then again, not that cushioned. And you know, maybe my injury actually came because I've been running in, I've been running all my kilometers in those shoes. Oh, well, the same model, but a different pair. This is a new pair that I've just used a few times. Uh, so that's good. They, they're fresh. Um, but maybe that's part of why the injury cropped up because I, I was just using the same shoes on every run or maybe it wasn't too enough cushion or who knows. But that's the shoes I'm running in, very lightweight, very nice for a race like that. And then um, singlet, singlet uh, cap, sunglasses probably. The weather will be pretty nice. It's going to be cloudy with sun like or sunny with a little bit of clouds I, I guess I wish it was no direct sun but it is going to be a little sunny uh, but 14 degrees Celsius though that's pretty cool which this is good I, I don't want it to be too hot and um, then I'm gonna have this belt that I bought um, where I'm um, gonna put a, a little squeezy bottle filled and this is my hydration uh, fueling strategy filled with basically maltodextrin and fructose and a little bit of salt uh, and a little bit of water so it's kind of like a homemade gel uh, and I'll be consuming about oh probably about 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour um, and I'll be doing that there's five aid stations along the route um, or four maybe four or five I think it's five and um, every five kilometers or so four or five kilometers and they got water there so as I'm approaching the aid station I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit of uh, sugar I'm going to wash it down with a glass of water, you know, 100, 200 milliliters or something like that. Um, drink basically then a liter throughout the race, something like that, give or take. And I'm going to try to approach the aid stations, grab the bottle, uh, grab the, uh, the glass, drink it and continue. Hopefully not lose more than a few seconds there every time. And that is it. Of course, in the morning breakfast, I'll be eating a banana breakfast, just ripe bananas, that's all. And uh, afterwards, I'll also be eating bananas. So uh, it's really pretty simple, really. I am nervous. I am uh, very nervous. Uh, in a good way. I mean, I really, really enjoy this nervousness and pre-race nervousness. That's why actually I'm doing most of my prep uh, two days out. So tomorrow is the day before the race. I'm just going to try and sort of uh, not think about the race too much. Just to have a relaxing, normal day before the race. Um, my dad is also running, but he also he's also injured, <laughs> uh, but he's more seriously injured than me, his hamstring. So he might not even be able to start, but uh, we're hoping, we're hopeful that he'll be able to start and just 
get through the race. For him, the main goal is to get through, but he also has a sub 230 goal for the half marathon. Um, he's run a lot of half marathons in his life and a lot of marathons. I think his PR in half marathon is 142 or something like that. So of course, that's also a goal for me to beat his, uh, his PR. And I'll do that by reaching my C goal, which is going sub 140. Mads is going to be with us to do some filming for you guys and of course be support and just hang around with us and look at me and shout my name when I'm passing him by at like 10 kilometers in or something like that where he'll be filming and uh, yeah it's gonna be an epic day I cannot express how excited I am uh, and every time I think about how excited I am I also get a little like oh shit this injury oh my god I wish I didn't have that injury because I just want to go and demolish the pavement I am going to do that. I'm not going to take uh, my injury. I'm not going to take it easy because of my injury. It's all or nothing. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to do it no matter what. And then uh, if I blow up because of the injury, then so be it. I'll, I'll, give, it all, I'll give it my all. Anything else to say? Hmm. A lot of people. It's a huge race. It's the biggest in Norway. Uh, thousands and thousands of people running and of course along the streets everyone's watching it's like a huge event in the city so there'll be a lot of spectators and uh, I'll have to try and keep my cool and try and keep my heart rate normal because I know I'm pretty affected by these kind of things and my heart rate will go up and that makes it more difficult to me to know am I running too hard am I running you know in terms of heart rate because I'm pretty tuned into my heart rate and I use my heart rate monitor on every run, but it'll go up with the excitement of the race and that'll make, that'll make it a little difficult for me to gauge. So at the end of the day, I guess I'll just have to go by feel, really. That is the gold standard, just is it sustainable? And take it easy, of course, for the first 10K, but I mean easy as in on pace, probably, and if, if maybe a little bit slower. For, so I don't know, until uh, race day, but 4.15 pace average, that's sub 130. And if I can maintain that, if, if I feel like 4.15 is just like, oh yeah, this is sustainable, then I'll, then, I'm, then I'll do that. But if not, I guess if I'm running 4.30 pace or something like that, and uh, that is, let's see, that, that is, well, that's 135. So uh, if I can stay below 4.30 pace, then I'll reach my B goal. Um, so I'll sort of figure out what goal I'm really going to go for on the day. And of course, as uh, in the second half, hopefully I'll have a lot left in the tank and I'll start really giving it. But that's also when the, the worst hill comes in. And it's a long 3k hill and there's some 10% grade areas there. And it's going to be gnarly, as they say, over in America. So anyway... Exciting though. It's an exciting challenge and I just hope my foot is going to be okay and, uh, and all that stuff. Thanks for watching. If, if you are interested in my follow-up, you know, how it went, of course you can follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Strava, there's links in the description. Um, and then I'm going to make a post-race vlog as, as well, of course, that you'll watch in a few weeks. But in between there, there will probably be some footage from uh, my cruise that I went on because I'm posting this like today. I'm gonna to post this video today. I rarely do that. Most of my videos are posted later, but this needs to be before the race. I'll just bam, get it posted right away. And then you'll have to just stay tuned for the follow up, and there'll be a little bit of like my videos won't be really chronological at this point. Uh, so stay tuned for that follow up. And uh, thanks a lot for following me here. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts. Uh, wish me good luck. And. Um, yeah, you can even follow me live. I mean, if you go to Oslo Marathon, if you search Oslo Marathon, you can look at the results. I think there's a possibility to look at like live results. If you're like a super fan, you can do that. <laughs> I do that with Sage Canada, which uh, I'm really a big fan of his. And I usually watch his races and I follow him live. That is it. And of course, Jenny, my coaching client, she's also running... Um, a half mar her half marathon the same day. So I'm wishing you all the best, Jenny. And um, yeah, bye.